Hi guys, in this video, I will discuss about Friedman tests and we're going to have a look at how to solve a non-parametric question using this test. Friedman test is a non-parametric statistical test used to detect differences in treatments across multiple test attempts. You might be wondering what is the difference between kraska wallis test and Friedman test. kraska wallis test is used to analyze the effects of just one factor on the experimental result, whereas the Friedman test analyzes the effect of two factors and it is known as the non-parametric equivalent of the two-way ANOVA. So what is meant by one factor and two factors? This can be illustrated by uh, an example of data here. So suppose we have this kind of data and you can see that there are five treatments or five samples whereby uh, the samples are differentiated by different types of students from very low IQ to very high IQ. So this type of data, it only has one factor, whereby the factor is concerned with the types of IQ or the level of IQ of the students. So another example here indicates uh, how there are two factors involved in this data. So you can see the first factor as what discussed just now. And the second factor here, or also known as block, is the level of students. So in this case, the students, uh, student A until E, they are uh, compared in terms of the level of their studies, that is from Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, and Form 4. So if we want to compare with the previous data, the students are compared um, without any level or without any block. So it means that the whole group of student A is compared with student B and so forth. So that are the difference between uh, data that has one factor and data that has two factors. And the second factor is normally known as block. Now let's have a look at what are the steps that we need to perform in order to use Friedman test to analyze a non-parametric problem. The Friedman test can be divided into two parts. The first part consists of five steps and the second part, which will be discussed later, consists of uh, four steps. So let's have a look at the first part. What are the first part uh, of the test consists of? So the first step, like in any other statistical test, is always to set hypothesis, both alternative and null hypothesis. Uh, the second step is to rank the data within each block. So remember now, our data has block, so we have to rank the data within each block. So every block will have its own ranks. The third step is to calculate what we call the sum of ranks within the treatment. So we have to also identify from the data which is treatment and which is block in order to perform these two steps. The fourth step is to calculate the test statistic for Friedman test, which is given by the parameter f. So this is the formula for F, whereby B stands for block and K stands for the number of treatment or the number of sample. And the fifth step is to compare F and chi-square values. So we have to find out what still chi-square values by referring to the chi-square table given the alpha value and the degree of freedom V, which is given by K minus 1. So normally the alpha value we have to define if uh, the value is not given in the question. So those are the five steps that we need to perform. And we also have to make a decision whether or not we reject the null hypothesis based on this rule of thumb. 
If the f value is greater than the chi-square value, then we reject the null hypothesis. And if it is the other way around, we have to accept the null hypothesis. So the reason why this test is divided into two parts uh, is because you will just have to end up at the fifth step if we accept the null hypothesis. But if we reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is a difference in the samples that we analyze, then we have to proceed with the second part in order to find which pairs or which samples that are not equal. The second part of the Friedman test is also known as Bonferrini inequality procedure. The procedure has four steps, starting with the sixth step that is to calculate the critical value given by this formula. Based on this formula, we have to find what is the z value from the standard normal table with the tail area of alpha divided by k multiplied by k minus 1. The seventh step is to order the total ranks si from the largest to the smallest value, followed by the eighth step, that is, to determine the difference between SI and SG and we have to compare the absolute value of the difference with the critical value that we have solved in the sixth step. The rule of thumb that we refer to is that we reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the difference is more than the critical value. The last step is to make conclusions based on the decision that we have made in the eighth step. So in the conclusion, we have to state which pairs that have significant difference and which pairs that do not have significant difference. So now let's have a look how we're going to solve a non-parametric problem using Friedman test. Suppose we are given with this question, a randomized block design is used to compare four treatments in eight blocks. Use Friedman test to detect differences in location among the four treatment distribution. Test using alpha equal to 0.05. As you can see in this question, it is clearly indicated what is block and what is treatment. Unfortunately, it will not be the case for all cases because in some instances you have to determine by yourself what is block and what is treatment. So the hint to this problem is that we have to see what is the focus of the equation. Normally all problems will have the primary focus that is to compare the treatments over the blocks. So we can easily guess what is the treatment based on the focus of the problem? In order to solve this equation using Friedman test, we have to perform all the steps that we have discussed just now. The first step is to set the hypothesis. The null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis can be written as follows whereby the null says that the means for all treatments are similar and the alternative hypothesis says that the means for all the treatments are not similar or you can also say at least one of the treatments is different. The second step is to rank the data within each block. This is the original data that is given to us the ranks of this data is given by this table, whereby you can see the ranks are based on the block. For example, for block 1, the lowest value is 81. So you rank that value as rank number 1, followed by 84 as the second rank, 85 
as the third rank, and 89 as the fourth rank. For the second block, you can see there are two similar values, which are 86, and we have to assign tight ranks for these two values. So the tight rank is given as 1.5, which is equal to 1 plus 2 divided by 2. So we assign tight ranks for these two similar values, followed by the third rank and the fourth rank. So we solve the ranks for all the blocks that we have here, and you can see the ranks are individual. It's based on blocks, and it is not continuous throughout the whole data. The third step is to calculate the sum of ranks within the treatment. So these are the ranks that we have solved in the second step. The sum of ranks of treatment 1 is given as 32, which is the sum of the ranks for all the 8 blocks, as you can see here, 4 times 8. S2 is given as 8.5. S3 is given as 18 and S4 is given as 21.5. The fourth step is to calculate the F value. This is the formula of F, where B stands for block, K stands for treatment, and in this problem, the B value is 8 and the K value is 4. The value of F is calculated as 21.19. The following step is to determine the chi-square value because we need to compare the chi-square value with the F value. So in order to find the chi-square value, we have to refer to the chi-square table. Given the information of alpha equal to 0.05, and degree of freedom k equal to 3. So from this table, we determine the chi-square value as 7.815. The rule of thumb says that we reject the null hypothesis if the f value is greater than the chi-square value. So since the f value that we obtained in the previous tab is 21.19, which is more than 7.815, then we have to reject the null hypothesis and we have to accept the alternative hypothesis. Or in other words, there is a difference between the means of the treatment. In order to find which means are different, we have to proceed with step 6 to step 9, which are categorized as Bonferreni, inequality procedure. The sixth step is to calculate the critical value. This is a formula of the critical value. First, we have to find what is the Z value by finding the tail area which is given by the formula of alpha divided by k multiplied by k minus 1. So here we solve the tail area as 0.00416 and that corresponds to the Z of 2.64. So here is how we obtain the value of 2.64. So the critical value is solved as 13.63. The seventh step is to order the total ranks as i from the largest to the smallest. So these are the si values in descending order. The highest value is given by s1, that is 32, followed by s4, 21.5, s3, 18, and s2, 8.5. The eighth step is to find the absolute value of the difference of SI and SJ, and then we compare 
with the critical value that we have solved in the sixth step. We reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the difference is more than the critical value. So here are the possible pairs from all the four treatments. We can match between S1 and S2, S1 and S3, S1 and 4, S2 and S3, S2 and S4, and S3 and S4. So those are the differences. And then we compare with the critical value of 13.63 and those are the decisions that we make based on the rule of thumb stated here. The last step is to make a conclusion whereby we have to state which pairs that have a significant difference and which pairs that do not have a significant difference. These are the decisions that we have made in the eighth step. So, based on this decision, we can conclude that at alpha 0 0.05, treatment 1 and 2 and treatment 1 and 3 have a significant difference, whereas treatment 1 and 4, 2 and 3, 2 and 4, and 3 and 4 do not have a significant difference. So, that's are all the nine steps that we have to perform in order to solve a non-parametric question using Friedman test. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more video tutorials from me.